Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my next guest tonight is the founding editor of Sassy magazine, and she's just written this book called For Real, The Uncensored Truth About American Teenagers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our show, Jane Pratt. Jane <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for coming. I'm excited to be here. But you know who's even more excited? Who's that? My mom. She Your has, mom? Well, she's excited about all these things when I do them, but particularly your show. She has the biggest crush on you, Conan. Really? She is. Ever since, even before How your show came on. How old is your mom? Um, she, <laughs> she's probably, um, oh, she'll hate me if I make it too old, but I think she's like 53. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's really attractive, Let's too. go. We'll be right back. She's married, unfortunately. Hey, don't worry yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm becoming the most unappealing figure in history. Don't worry about that. Really? So she's... That's cool. She talks she's about you it. all the time. Like, she oh. works it into conversations where it makes no sense at all. She'll be like, and Conan the other night was, you know, and Conan this, and, you know. Yeah, that's probably very irritating. <laughs> it's probably, <laughs> Mom, stop it, please. It's okay. Conan's quite she has insane. She's a little glow about her now oh. ever since you came on the air. Yeah. <laughs> hey, very neat. All right. Well, that's cool. So, Howard, now I want to ask you. We'll get to the book in just a second. But I found out. I got to ask you about this. Yeah. Um, you went recently to Michael Jackson's ranch, yes, I did. and you got an opportunity to actually talk to the man himself. No one gets to go to this ranch. Nobody. Yeah. I've tried several times. I'm always turning. You were the one at the gate. Yeah, that's me. Mm, yeah. That's me, holding an empty box of Lucky Charms, going, please, please. <laughs> There's been a misunderstanding. Uh, no one gets in. No one gets into the... How, first of all, how'd you get in? Well, to get in, you have to sign like a five-page thing saying that you will not reveal anything that you, that you see there. So really? Very, yes, yes. So, so tell I us, what it. did you see? So what <laughs> Come on, Michael's not watching the show. The he turns time. in real early. Yeah, he's not watching right True. now. No, the whole time I was there, I kept thinking, I was like dying to call up some of my friends or like my mom or something and go, Mom, there's like, there are elephants going around the pond or whatever. But you... Are there really elephants walking around? I was so afraid around? if I even like told anybody that. Uh, and I just did. He sounds so. like a. <laughs> Are they going to come? Right now me off he's dis now? yeah. Right now he's dispatching <laughs> exactly. some agents. He's talking you know. to my lawyer right yeah. now. Yeah, he's sending he's sending four monkeys out to attack you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> no, I mean yeah. I, I'm serious. It's like he's like a Bond villain. He's like a James yeah. Bond villain because he surrounds himself in this complex. He has all these mm. weird people working for him. He's probably working to you know control the Earth's weather and hold the UN for ransom. <laughs> no one knows what he's really. It's true. Don't you think he's got strange animals? That's all the stuff that, that James Bond villains were into. That's absolutely right. When he showed you around the complex, did he said this laser is capable of destroying <laughs> South America? Absolutely. Soon the whole world will be on its knees. But Mr. Bond, I tire of this conversation. Let's. No, you know what? The truth is, he's actually he's he's very different from any perception that I had of him. Before beforehand mm -hmm. he's he's well he's incredibly i mean i defend him to anybody because he's he's wonderful he's sweet he's nice he's also incredibly macho now i know that's not really the way you think of it i've got him I, 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 I had the biggest crush on him i didn't say I, anything i mean i just looked at my sympathy camera <laughs> What do you say? No, no, no. No, I mean, at least seriously, like, he's really macho. Like, he's I mean, he's like spitting and well, hiking okay. up his pants and. Not, not was he like moving spinning. the refrigerator a lot when he was there? No. <laughs> I'm gonna move that he's, thing. He's, ah, there we go. All right. He is. I mean, he's kind. Of, he's a flirt for one thing. Is Lisa really? gonna come and like deck me or something? But, but, no. Um, but he's, no. A, he's a big flirt, and he's also. But he's the kind of person that he he notices like if your drink needs refilling or if you're a little cold, he'll come and bring you a jacket. I mean, very. Did you get to keep concerned. the jacket afterwards? No. He's very wealthy. He should let I you keep know. the jacket. He gave me some T-shirts. He did give me some t-shirts. The man's worth a billion dollars and he gave me some t-shirts. Cookies. <laughs> some cookies that have Neverland Ranch on them. Great, a cookie and a, an old t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. It was, it was, uh, it sounds funny. Yeah. He's very macho. This is all very different. This is... Yeah, he's... It, no, he's very, very, very different than anything I'd ever heard about him before. And much more normal mm -hmm. than anything that... than the way that he's portrayed. How much is he paying you? They don't believe me. I hear people going, yeah. What's he giving you? <laughs> I'm telling you, he's really macho. Right. He broke five bricks stacked up. <laughs> right. All right, well, let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about the book before we, while we still have time. 
Great. Uh, because you've just violated your, your code of truth with Michael Jackson. <laughs> I know, it's all over. <laughs> yeah, you'll be killed any second now. Um, this is the uncensored truth about American teenagers. And the interesting thing about this book, you talk about a lot of teens, what they're thinking, what they're going through, but you reveal a lot about yourself. Yeah. And you, know, you mentioned your mom, you mentioned your dad. Isn't that strange for you? I mean, you've got stuff in yeah, this book. Yeah, it's strange that's, for them. Yeah, too. it's yeah. pretty personal stuff. How did you handle that? Well, see, I mean, I guess what I figured was the teenagers in the book were revealing all kinds of things about themselves and their, their sex lives and their, you know, the drugs they were taking or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. And so I figured I should reveal stuff about myself too, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. So, um, so what I... But some of this what, stuff is pretty personal. I mean, you're talking personal. about losing your virginity. Yes. And oh, you read that page. <laughs> page 181, yes. Yeah, they showed me where um, it was, yeah. <laughs> Jim Conan was special. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> that's a service that's provided for me. It's like, here's the book and read that. <laughs> homina, homina. Conan's cliff notes. For yeah, me. it's all distilled for me. No, they right. put little post-its in here with everything. But there's a lot, there's a real personal stuff in there. Now, did oh, you yeah. prepare your parents for that? Did you oh, say, yes. skip page 86? Yes, it, well, no, what I did was Actually, I sent my mom. Actually, 84, yeah. yeah. No, my mom, over the years, like through Sassy and then through my talk show, she's used to learning about very personal things about me in mm -hmm. a very public way. Mm -hmm. So I, so what I did was, though, I sent her an early copy of the book with, like, little post-its throughout it. You know, warning, losing my virginity story, coming up, page 181, you know, <laughs> two pages away. And then I do, like, another one, like, I will warning. soon be losing yeah. my virginity. <laughs> exactly. Warning. Exactly. Warning, Will Robinson. Warning. All right. <laughs> exactly. Very cool. Warning. Page 197. Jane gets handcuffed to a chair and fed 18 shots of Bacardi 151. You know, you, you missed Did, that one? No. They oh, didn't. In there. You idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I pay you people good money. You were, you were, you were. Uh, Handcuffed to a chair? These were my friends that did this to me on my 18th birthday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some friends, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your friends handcuffed you to a chair and gave you how many shots? 18 shots of Bacardi 151. Well, I'm glad you're counseling teenagers about how to behave. <laughs> I, well, I feel better I about America's it, teens. You know, uh huh. through it. Uh huh. And so did your, uh, and how did that episode worked out, by the way? The 18 uh, shots. Oh, the... I only remember up to nine. <laughs> and I don't know what happened after that. You woke up in Iowa. Okay. Yeah. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Say no more. All right. Well, uh, now, we didn't get to talk about this. I know uh, this is something. You did one of those talk shows. You did one yeah. of those talk shows. that, And there's so many of them coming out right now. I mean, Danny Bonaducci oh. has a talk show. Yeah. Uh, who else has a talk show? Carney Wilson Carteris, has a talk show. Gabrielle Carteris has one. Carney Wilson. Yeah. You said. Everybody, yeah. Everybody has a talk show yes. now. These issues talk shows. And you did one. Do you have any advice for those people? Because well, so many are doing it and they could look to you for how to do one of these things. Well, so, especially since mine went off the air after one season. But anyway, um, yeah. I, um, I, the main thing I would say is to check out your guests beforehand. Give them like a polygraph test or something beforehand because guests lot they'll do anything to get on TV I, I got duped so many times one time okay one time this couple came on the show mm -hmm. and they and he revealed to her on the air that he had actually slept with her best friend or her mother or mm -hmm. something. I can't remember you know but um and I was and their relationship was just ruined from mm -hmm. here and I was so upset about it you know I went home and I kept thinking about it and I was like and I have to still get in there tomorrow and host the cheapskates boyfriend show and the Satanism show and the you know whatever tough the, week. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's always a tough week so, um, so anyway, then, months later, I get this note from them in the mail. Oh, we're acting students. Thanks for giving us our big break. We got extra credit for that. Wait, the whole thing was fake? Totally fake, the entire thing. Now, what do you do when that happens? Can't you, can you sue them? Can you take legal action? And if so, uh, is there any way I can get in on that and make right. some money? I mean, I don't know if there's anything you can do. Really? So if these people just get on, it's, you know. Yeah. My psychiatrist is very glad about it. You know, I go in there and pour out all my angst. So the whole about thing was a fake. So you, do you think a lot of these guests are fake that come on these shows? Uh, well, I, yeah. Wow. I do. I mean, or they, or they play it up for the mm -hmm. camera. You know, maybe that some. That wasn't the real Deborah Norville, by the way. We had, yeah. No, and I'm not the real Jane Pratt either. No, no this whole thing's all... fake. Exactly. Andy's a robot, actually, for this episode. <laughs> Trained to kill at any moment. All right. Well, the book is for real, and uh, it's the uncensored truth about America's teenagers. Yes, it Jane is. Pratt, thank you very much for coming Thanks on the show. Good to have you here. We'll take a break, and we come back. John Prine will be with us. We'll see you in a minute.